Hello everyone, welcome to the Brain Science and Technology series. I'm Amol Gimire. Today we shall discuss about the massing technology in the brewing operation. Hope you guys enjoyed the first part of this session on massing theory and biochemistry. If some of you have not watched it before, I strongly recommend you to watch that video in this channel to understand the science behind massing theory before you dive into the technological perspective of it. You might already know from the previous video on massing theory and biochemistry that massing is the process in which malt grist, adjunct and water are mixed together at suitable temperature and time for the malt enzyme to convert the various components of the malt or the cereals that you used into fermentable sugar and other nutrients. The liquid containing the sugar and the yeast nutrient is referred to as wort or extract and the spent grain constitute the solid residue that remains after the wort has been separated from the mass. Massing Plant and Process Control During massing process, brewer has control over the following parameters. Equipment design which includes tank, massing in devices, mixing device, heating equipment, grist to water ratio, massing method which includes different method to set mass at different time temperature regime, mass pH and the oxygen pickup during massing. Our entire presentation today shall be focused over this topic. When considering a mass turn, various design criteria such as ease of CIP, good heat transfer, homogeneous mixing with low shear stress, low oxygen pickup needs to be explored in addition to the financial impact. It is important for brewer to understand the design criteria in order to validate what equipment and plant manufacturer propose to them when asking for the techno-commercial offer. Beer has been brewed since ages. Originally, the mass tun were made up of wood and were equipped with raking machine. Wood was hard to clean and had limited life. Therefore, later in 16th century, brewers started to use copper for brew vessels because of its good corrosion resistance, superior malleability for casting device or the casting vessels, and high thermal conductivity. Copper vessel also had advantage for removal of undesirable sulfur components from the wort during boiling and also increased the color formation during boiling. Because of the high thermal conductivity, heat from the external burner was more efficiently transferred to the wort in copper kettle. Copper vessels are still in use in many old breweries and also preferred by some brewers today because of its premiumness and historical branding. Modern masters are made of stainless steel of grade 304 or 316. Stainless steel has lower thermal conductivity than copper, however vessels these days tend to have thinner walls around 1.5 to 2 mm and hence rate of heat transfer is not a major problem. In addition, stainless steel vessels are easier to clean using CIP systems than copper vessels and unlike copper, SS retain their shiny surfaces. They also have greater strength, lower overall cost and less maintenance, therefore SS has become the modern choice of metal for the maston. Here we see some of the picture of the maston. This is a schematic view of a modern maston which we shall discuss in later in more detail. This is a traditional maston made up of copper with wooden cladding. These are the maston from the medieval period. These are copper maston and these are the stainless steel maston. During sizing of the maston, following technical parameter needs to be considered. That includes total mass water, that is grain to water ratio, which is typically around 1 is to 4. The volume displacement of the grist, which is based on the bulk density of the grist or the malt that we use for massing and is in the range of 7 to 8 hectoliter per ton of malt. And the head space typically is between 20 to 25 percent in order to avoid the overboil or over foaming. The head space also takes into factor the top cone of the maston which does not pose the heating jacket because of the health and safety issue of the brewer. This is a typical calculation for the sizing of the maston. We have considered here 1000 kg malt, grist to water ratio of 1 is to 4 and head space of 25%. The volume displaced by 1000 kg malt would be 800 liters based on the bulk density of the malt to be 8 hectoliter per ton or 0.8 liter per kg. Water in the maston to use for 1000 kg malt would be 4000 liter based on the grist water ratio of 1 is to 4. The sum of these two components gives 4800 liter. And if the head space of 25% is considered, which is 1200 liter, the total volume of mass ton should be 6000 liter or 60 hectoliter. Therefore, the mass ton design or the size has to be 60 hectoliter in order to mass 1000 kg of mold with maximum grist water ratio of 1 is to 4. 
brewer has many flexibility in order to design their brew house. There are many innovative craft brewery who wants to do a startup and are stuck on a decision to choose how many brew vessels should they install. The installation are largely dependent on their capital investment and the volume they are planning for sales. It also depends on the type of the beer they want to produce. For a small brewery with low capital investment and small plant sales volume, they can always start with two vessel system where Maston and Lauterton are coupled in a single vessel with no heating provision and another vessel with heating provision which function both as wort kettle and whirlpool. In this case, single step massing shall be planned or exterior addition of hot water can be planned for temperature rise up to different higher temperature rates than the massing in temperature which we shall discuss later. If their capital investment are slightly on a higher side, they can plan installing three vessels with Maston and Watt Kettle as one vessel, Lauterton the second vessel and Whirlpool the third vessel. Only one vessel which functions both as Maston and Watt Kettle has the heating provision. Heating provision to the tank costs nearly half to one third of the cost of the tank, so brewer always want to reduce the number of the tank with the heating provision in order to reduce the cost. This gives more flexibility to the brewer in terms of different step temperature during massing. For mid-size brewery, four vessel system can be planned with Maston, Lauterton, Watt Kettle and Whirlpool. This is a standard arrangement for a mid-size to a large brewery in order to play with the different process conditions to produce different style of beer and produce decent number of brews per day to meet the sales demand. Maston and Watt Kettle are heated vessel in this case. Brewer can also plan to install a pre-run tank in between the Lauterton and the Watt Kettle in order to manage the buffer time between the Lauterton and the Watt Kettle which helps increase the capacity of the brew house in terms of number of brews per day. For mid-size to large breweries using the adjunct as part of their grist composition, an additional adjunct cooker is also added in the above 4 vessel system making the same system as a 5 vessel system. Many breweries use rice as adjunct in order to reduce the cost of manufacturing and to produce light body beer. Rice is one of the most common and most difficult grain to process because of its high gelatinization temperature in the range of 80 degrees centigrade. Due to this, rice is massed in a separate vessel with a smaller proportion of malt and heated at higher temperature till 90 to 95 degrees centigrade for efficient starch granules breakdown. Other brew vessel remain same as four vessel system. With the increasing number of vessels, so if you see here, these are the number of the vessels. With the increasing number of vessels, the brew cycle keeps on decreasing from 7 hours to 2 hours with the increasing number of brews from 3 brews per day to maximum 12 brews per day. Brew cycle is the best time to produce one batch, that is time from charging of malt or grist till the finish of the wort cooling from that batch of grist. So brewers start with low investment with 2 or 3 vessel system and with the increase in their sales capacity, they can invest on additional brew vessels to shorten their brew cycle time and increase the number of brews per day or increase the volume. For a microbrewery with 10 hectoliter brew house with 3 vessel system can produce in a day 3 brews which is 30 hectoliter per day. However, if the brewer keep on expanding the brew house to a 5 vessel system with the possibility to produce 12 brews per day, he or she can produce 120 hectoliter per day which is just 4 times the capacity they started with. Thus, during initial step of setting up the brewery, brewer needs to plan it in a long term. Installation of adjunct cooker depends on the decision of use of adjunct that you want to use. Most common adjunct used in brewing are rice, corn and sorghum. As discussed in the previous video of massing theory and biochemistry, malt gelatinizes at 60 degrees centigrade, while adjuncts such as rice, maize and sorghum gelatinizes at 75 to 80 degrees centigrade. So if you use both malt and rice in the same vessel for massing, rice will remain ungelatinized and hence not extracted. This will completely defeat the objective of massing that we discussed before. If you heat the mass until 80 degrees centigrade in order for rice to get gelatinized and liquefied, all the enzyme necessary for the breakdown of protein and starch will be destroyed as no enzyme can withstand the temperature above 77 degrees centigrade and hence the complete mass will stand still. Therefore, to cater this problem, there are two technological options. One is to use pre-gelatinized starch such as corn flakes or rice flakes readily available in the market directly in the mass tun. And other is a separate brew vessel called adjunct cooker with a heating provision. The design of the adjunct cooker is similar to that of the mass tun. However, adjunct cooker are smaller in size due to lower proportion of adjunct than the mall in a total grist composition. In practice, 30-50% to 50 of the malt amount is used as adjunct by some of the large commercial breweries. 
A smaller amount of malt is generally used together with the adjunct during massing in because of the utilization of endogenous enzyme of the malt. However, if the proportion of adjunct is high, for example 50% or greater than 50%, the use of exogenous enzymes such as beta-glucanase, alpha-amylase and beta-amylase are preferred. This is a typical design of a modern mass tun that I use these days. It consists of a vapor chimney for the steam vapor to release during heating, top cover for better hygiene and safety. More than one CIP cleaning nozzle are evenly distributed to different sections of the mass tun for larger vessels. Interior light in order to view inside the mass tun from the side glass installed in the man door. Man door are installed for any access inside the vessel for maintenance inside the mass tun or for taking samples and adding grease or salt used during massing. The side wall of the cylindrical tank are insulated for safety from the risks of burning due to high temperature. Insulation also helps to prevent the heat loss from the vessel and provide better energy efficiency. Ladder are provided for access inside the tank. However, since ladder increases the shear forces and are not hygienic, they are eliminated in modern mass tun. External ladder are used when need to access inside the tank. Steerer or agitator are fitted at the bottom of the tank with a drive motor for homogeneous mixing of the grease and water inside the mass tun. Depending on the heating rate required, the vessels are provided with a heating surface in the bottom of the vessel until certain height of the cylindrical sidewall. Special care must be taken to choose the sidewall heating jacket so that they are always covered within the mass or else they cause scorching or burning. The inlet and outlet pipe for the mass tun are generally from the bottom in order to fill the tank gently without any splashing. This helps to avoid the oxygen pickup encountered mostly when the mass inlet is from the top of the vessel. Massing in Massing in refers to the extremely thorough mixing of grease and water at predetermined specified temperature. The temperature of the water during mixing is called massing in temperature. Massing in temperature depends on the quality of the grain and the recipe of the beer primarily which enzyme brewer target to activate. Goals during massing are to quickly mix malt and mass in water, avoid formation of lumps, maintain safety, maintain target mass in temperature, maintain greased water ratio as per the recipe, and keep low oxygen pickup. Massing in temperature Massing in temperature is influenced by the optimum temperature of the enzyme which brewer wants to activate initially and is dependent on malt. Under-modified malt require lower massing in temperature whereas well-modified malt require higher massing in temperature. Modification refers to the sum of the process that occur within the starch in the sperm during malting. During modification, beta-glucans and pentodons in the wall of the cells of the endosperm are degraded. Some proteolysis occur and starch granules, especially the small type, are broken down. These changes result in a change in the physical appearance of the grain. The endosperm is transferred from a relatively tough structure into a softer, more friable form. So the under-modified malt are less friable, whereas the over-modified or the well-modified and homogeneous malt are more friable. Under-modified malt has lesser beta-amylase activity during the malting process. Therefore, to continue those enzyme to act, under-modified malt are massed in at low temperature of around 45 to 48 degrees centigrade. However, proteolytic enzymes are also activated at this temperature and hence lead to exhaustive breakdown of higher and lower molecule of protein which affects the foam stability. Brewers need to preserve longer chain protein for better foam stability. At lower temperatures, some beta amylases are also activated and hence leads to higher attenuation and more dry beer. When massing in start at lower temperature, it takes long process time and use high energy. Well-modified malt with a friability of greater than 85% and homogeneity of greater than 75% can be massed in at higher temperature of around 60 to 63 degrees centigrade. Beta-glucans are dissolved by beta-glucan solubilase at higher temperature. However, beta-glucanase will be denatured so beta-glucan will still remain in the mass which shall impede water runoff during lautering and subsequently may cause beer filtration problems. Since proteolytic enzymes are less active at temperature above 60 degrees centigrade, higher molecular protein are preserved to give better foam stability. Similarly, the free amino nitrogen from the degradation of peptides are also less released. Lower fan result in lower wart color due to lower level of mylar reaction. Mylar reaction requires sugar and amino acid to form color compound called melanoidins at higher boiling temperature. Due to higher massing in temperature, the energy uses is less. 
there is always excess availability of hot water in a brewery, so massing at higher temperature is less energy intensive in comparison to heat input for temperature rise with the use of added steam in mass. Mixing of water and grist. Pre-masser are devices in which water at massing in temperature is injected while the grist flows past and is thereby mixed without the formation of the lumps. They are also called mass mixer or mass rehydrator. Ideal pre-masser should allow massing in without clumping as clumping reduces the extract recovery. The massing in device needs to be sanitary and capable of CIP. Prevention of oxidation during massing in is very important. Therefore, pre-masser are flushed with inert gases such as nitrogen and carbon dioxide from grist grease through massing in area till the mass time. Because the fine particle sizes increases the surface area of the grain and subsequently are more susceptible to oxidation. There are different design of pre-masser available. This one here is called the Botex Mixer. This is a steel masser. Vortex mixer is designed for use with relatively thin masses used for decoction or temperature programmed infusion massing. Their enclosed design favors exclusion of oxygen. In the device, the grist is allowed to fall from the grist case into the chamber contained within a section of vertically mounted pipe roll. Hot liquor is injected into the chamber via a tangentially mounted inlet creating a vortex so that the grist is mixed very efficiently into the mass of rotating and swirling liquor. Steel masser are more associated with traditional UK style ale breweries. They were first introduced in 1853. They are particularly suited for mixing and transferring the thick masses associated with the use of ale master. However, they are unable to prevent ingress of oxygen. Grist is delivered into the vertical part of the tube via a series of slide valves. These are used to control the rate of addition of the grist and to prevent steam from entering the grist case and in doing so prevent the weighting of the content in the grist case. As the dry grist falls into the horizontal part of the pre masser it is mixed with the hot liquor which is coming in from this pipe here. The weighted material is driven along the horizontal pipe by a rotating screw mixer. As it progresses, the weighted grist is mixed by a series of rotating rods. Eventually, the mass reaches the end from which a spout delivers it to the mass conversion vessel or the mass tank. These are another kind of pre-masser called Mura Mecha Masser. In this design, the incoming mold grist is mixed in the hydrator with the hot water and is mixed intensively in a mecha masser beneath it by means of a screw conveyor. Prior to mold grist, system is completely flushed with de-edited water to avoid oxygen. The mass is later pumped with the eccentric screw pump, also called monopump, with no oxygen entry to the mass tank. These are another kind of pre-masser which are widely used today from the company called Brauchen. I'm not here promoting any of these brands, these are only to demonstrate the principles behind the pre-massing. In this kind of pre-masser, during massing in the grist sinks to the bottom and is split by the cone in a circular direction and then comes into contact with the turbulent water in a closed flame. This guidance of media guarantees a uniform mixture and prevents lumps forming. In order for the mold to mix homogeneously with the water and to have optimum contact between the mold component and the enzyme, agitator must be installed in the mass tank. However, care must be taken to avoid high shear forces and oxygen pickup during agitation. High shear will cause deformation of high molecular compound. For example, beta-glucan may stretch under high shear forces and make us extensive cross-linking like we have seen in a previous video and hence it increases the viscosity of the mass. Under a high viscosity, the action of amylolytic and proteolytic enzymes are less efficient and it will cause high torque for the motor of the agitator and high current consumption. Therefore, the impeller of the agitator needs to be properly designed and rotation speed of the impeller must be set at optimum level. Similarly, obstructions such as baffles and ladders also increases the shear forces and hence are avoided in modern maston to the extent possible. The length of the agitator depends on the vessel diameter. If the impeller length are too short, it will cause inhomogeneous mixing and lead to temperature differences in the different section of the mass, which will subsequently lead to hot spot at some dead pocket, surface burning, bond flavor, low extraction, and yield. 
Therefore, large agitator are preferred with as low rotation as possible with peripheral speed of 1 to 2 meter per second. During massing in and heating up, for more rigorous mixing, the rotation of the impeller are set at higher speed of around 20 to 25 rpm, while during rest, gentle mixing is sufficient and the speed of the agitator is reduced to 9 to 12 rpm. This is performed using frequency drive in the agitator motor. When rice is used as an adjunct, the grist water ratio is set at higher range in the range of 3 to 3.5 parts of water for one part of mold because of the high viscosity increase in rice due to higher gelatinization temperature. If allowed and possible, some exogenous enzyme are also used to reduce the viscosity of the rice mass. Ignorance of these preventive measures may cause so high viscosity that viscosity increases to the level where agitator comes to a complete standstill. During agitation, care must be taken to avoid swirling of mass in order to oxygen pick up. The effect of oxidation during massing in beer quality can't be minimized later in the subsequent operations. The heating system must be designed to achieve, to achieve shorter heating time between different heating regimes. However, care must be taken not to heat at high rate which may cause burning and scorching. In the traditional mass turn, heating rate were maintained in the range of 0.7 to 1 degree centigrade per minute, whereas in modern mass turn, it is higher up to 2 degree centigrade per minute. There are various methods available for heating, which includes hot water injection, direct fire, internal steam coils, semicircular pipe or dimple plate jackets, and direct steam injection. Direct fire is a traditional method and are used only by some home brewer. Heating with hot water injection is practiced in a small brewery with unheated mass tun, like we have seen before. Massing in is done with thick mass in this case, and later hot water is added to increase the temperature in the mass tun. Since the hot water added will dilute the mass concentration, the hot water injection is started with the massing in at thick mass. The internal steam coils are not commonly practiced these days due to the hygiene issue and cleaning difficulties and are only used by some of the home brewers and smaller systems, like the picture here. Semicircular steam jacket and dimple plate jacket are most common heating system practiced today in the brewing industry. Mostly in all the indirect heat exchange process, steam at a pressure of 2 to 4 bar is used for heating and hot condensate formed after the heat exchange is reused back to the boiler. Recently, some manufacturers do manufacture mass tun with direct steam injection. In this case, there is no condensate return and there is maximum energy efficiency. However, care must be taken that steam must be of utmost purity with no oil and salt. Grist water ratio is the proportion between the amount of malt used and the water used for massing in. The grist water ratio determines the first water concentration. First wort or sweet wort is the wort collected from the Lauterton before sparging of the grain. Sweet wort is targeted 5 to 6 percent stronger than the original extract of the beer so that sufficient water can be used for sparging the grain to wash out the sugar during sparging. The extract recovery is reduced continuously with time from the start of sparging in the Lauterton to about 1 to 1.5 degree plateau till the last run so the diluted low extract compensates the high extract in the sweet wort to give desired targeted gravity of the wort before the start of boiling. Enzyme activity is affected by the mass thickness as it influences the substrate concentration and the enzyme concentration which we have reviewed in the previous presentation. Thick mass protects the enzyme as it provides thermal cushion to those enzymes while thin mass increases the activity of the enzyme. Too thin mass reduces the enzyme concentration and the sweet wort gravity. For pale beer, thin mass with large quantity of water is used in the range of 1 is to 3 to 1 is to 4. For example, for 100 kg of malt, 300 to 400 liter of water is used. This has positive influence in the amylolytic enzyme activity. For dark beer, thick mass with lesser quantity of malt is used in the range of 1 is to 6 to 1 is to 3, that is, for 100 kg of malt, 160 to 300 liter of water is used. This process has positive influence on proteolytic enzyme activity. High proteolytic enzyme activity produces more fan, which undergoes mild reaction at high temperature to give more dark color wort or dark color beer. Massing method primarily depends on the beer that you want to produce, quality of malt available, 
and the infrastructure available in the brew house such as number of brew vessels, vessel design and its component, provision of heating in the vessel and the associated pump and pipelines. Broadly, massing processes are categorized as infusion massing and decoction massing. Infusion massing are further categorized as single step infusion and multi step infusion, which we shall see later in this presentation. Infusion massing is one of the most common methods which has been practiced globally in the present days. Decoction is derived from the Latin word decoctum, meaning boil off. So the name itself reflects that some portion of the mass is boiled off separately and returned to the main mass. The malting technology in 17th or 18th century was not as advanced like it is now, so the malt used for brewing were majorly under-modified. To compensate the poorly modified malt, decoction massing was practiced in traditional times, mostly for the European lager beer. However, with the development in the malting technology, the malt available in today's market are well modified and hence decoction massing are mostly replaced by infusion massing except for some typical style of beer such as Hefeweizen. Infusion massing is the simplest process where the entire mass is kept together in one vessel with the provision of heating. Since there is no transfer of mass between the different vessels, like in decoction massing, it prevents the oxygen ingress and subsequently helps in better flavor stability. The energy costs are lower as the grist is only held till maximum 77 to 78 degrees centigrade, while in decoction part of the mass is heated till boiling temperature. Since the temperatures are not till boiling in infusion massing, there is less mylar reaction in comparison to the decoction massing and hence less color in the wort and beer. Therefore, infusion massing is most common for pale lager beer globally today. Major parameter in the infusion massing includes massing in temperature, rest temperature and the rest duration. Based on these technological parameters, infusion massing is further divided or categorized into single step infusion or multi step infusion. In single step infusion, also called simple infusion method, which are mostly practiced by microbreweries or craft breweries, where the combined mass ton and louter ton in a single unheated vessel are installed. Thick mass are used from coarsely ground, well modified malt in this process. In a typical regime, massing in is done primarily at 63 to 67 degrees centigrade and the mass is heated to 67 to 69 degrees centigrade with the addition of the hot water via underlit. Once the starch is completely saccharified, which takes around 2 to 3 hours, water collection, heat circulation and sparging is continued in the same vessel. Therefore, the process is lengthy at around 5 to 7 hours per batch. Multi-step infusion massing technique is used in a separate mass ton, which would be a heated vessel. In this technique, heat is applied to the mass so that it is allowed to progress through an increasing sequence of controlled temperature for defined duration at each temperatures. It is mostly used method because of the ease of the operation, low cost and great flexibility to the brewer to be able to select different temperature targeting the optimal enzyme activity of different enzyme. For example, here at 50, the proteolytic enzyme would be activated. At around 60 to 65 degrees centigrade, beta amylase would be activated. And around 70 to 72 degrees centigrade, alpha amylase would be activated. In single step infusion massing, brewer has limited option to play with different time temperature and therefore has limited capability to influence the beer quality. As mentioned before, single step infusion are carried in unheated vessel where massing and loutering function in a single tank. Since the massing is only at one temperature, massing in is done with low breast water composition making the mass thicker. After the massing in, the hot water or the steam is injected directly inside the vessel to increase the mass temperature to the desired temperature. Mass needs to get stirred very homogeneously to assure even temperature in this case. Single step infusion massing is used primarily by craft brewery or small scale brewery where there is no separate mass ton and louter ton. In multi-step infusion method, 
brewer has great flexibility to influence the character of the beer based on the different temperature time regime that are chosen. Major quality parameter that can be influenced is with the activation of proteolytic and amylolytic enzyme. More proteolytic activity produces more fan and smaller chain of peptide and hence low foam stability. Proteolytic enzyme needs to be optimum to produce sufficient fan while also protect some large chain peptide for foam retention. Similarly, the sweetness or dryness and the body of the beer or the degree of the attenuation is dependent on the activity of the amylolytic enzyme. More beta amylase activity gives higher attenuation which shall subsequently produce low body and more dry beer. In decoction massing, Part of the main mass is withdrawn and boiled in a separate vessel and later pumped back to the main mass. The decoction massing are termed as single decoction, double decoction and triple decoction depending on the number of boiled mass. Decoction massing is used majorly to compensate the quality of poorly modified malt. Removal of boiled mass to a separate vessel has following effect on the boiled mass. Less protein breakdown and more extensive gelatinization and liquefaction of starch, increased extraction of husk, increased formation of melanoidin resulting in darker beer, increased removal of DMS, reduced amount of activity time in the total mass, and higher brew house yield. Generally, the boiled mass quantity varies from one third to a quarter of total mass. Boiled mass fraction depends on the desired temperature to reach after re-addition and is calculated using this formula here. Boiled mass in HL is equal to the desired temperature increase in degree centigrade multiplied by the total mass in HL divided by the difference in temperature between boiled mass and unboiled massing in degree centigrade. Temperature of the boiled mass is considered as 95 degrees centigrade in this formula for ease. However, if you are sure about the boiling temperature precisely, you may use the same instead of 95 degrees centigrade. An example has been worked out for better understanding. If you have 100 hectoliter of mass at a temperature of 50 degrees centigrade, that must be heated to 64 degrees centigrade. What amount of mass must be boiled? So the cell highlighted in yellow are the precondition here. The desired temperature of mass 64 degrees centigrade, temperature of unboiled mass is 50 degrees centigrade, and the total mass volume is 100 degrees centigrade. From the case here, the volume of the boiled mass is calculated using this formula here and is computed to be 31 hectoliter. So out of 100 hectoliter, 31 hectoliter of mass is withdrawn as boiled mass and is boiled till 95 degrees centigrade and then later pumped back to the main mass to achieve the desired temperature of 64 degrees centigrade. Common practice during decoction massing is that the agitator is stopped in the main mass for a certain time to allow thick mass to settle and hence that thick mass is used for boiled mass. Thick mass still has the undissolved mass particles and are further broken down more efficiently during boiling. Thin mass on the top portion is already enriched with the enzyme and are readily utilized. Due to great flexibility and versatility, the extraction and yield are best with decoction massing. However, the better yield is offset with the high energy cost for the transfer of mass and heating till boiling. Decoxin is also less preferred due to high capital cost for a greater number of vessels and also due to the high operating cost to operate those vessels and their associated parts. Decoxin process depends on various parameters such as massing in temperature, rest temperature, rest duration. These three parameters are same as step infusion massing and the other two more parameters need to be considered and those are number of decoction masses and decoction time. Based on the number of boiled masses, the decoction massing is termed as single decoction, double decoction or triple decoction. For example here, massing in is at 50 degrees centigrade and a certain portion of mass is withdrawn, boiled till 100 degrees centigrade and returned back to the main mass. So only one part of total mass is boiled separately and is called single decoction. 
However, here one part is boiled and returned back to the main mass to increase the temperature from 35 degree centigrade to 50 degree centigrade. From the 50 degree centigrade mass, angle portion is withdrawn and boiled and returned back to increase the temperature from 50 degree centigrade to 60 degree centigrade. And from 60 degree mass, another portion of mass is withdrawn, boiled and returned to increase the temperature to around 70 degree centigrade. Since the number of boiled mass is 3 in this case, this process is called triple decoction. Mass acidification The pH of the mass is usually in the range of 5.6 to 5.8 after massing in due to the interaction between calcium and magnesium salt of the massing in water and the phosphate and the other components of the mold. However, there are a series of processes and changes that occur considerably faster and better at lower mass pH in the range of 5.2 to 5.4 depending on the recipe of the brand. Maintaining low mass pH has following advantages. Better enzyme activity which gives higher attenuation and increased yield. Improved trough formation because of the better protein expression at low mass pH. Finer, more stable foam bubbles because of the protein breakdown and less tendency for protein haze due to the large molecular peptides and protein remaining in the beer. Lower wort viscosity because of better beta glucanase activity resulting in faster larvering and better beer filtration. Improved redox potential which reduces the susceptibility to the oxygen and hence produce light color of wort in beer. Improved flavor stability. The hops bittering does not linger. Promotion of growth substances to go into solution, example a zinc is increased at low mass pH, which is an essential nutrient for the yeast group. Acidification of the mass can be done by any one of these methods. Use of acidulated malt or use of food grade inorganic acid or use of organic acid or use of food grade calcium salt. Acidulated malt is pale malt that has been subjected to lactic acid fermentation after kilning in the malting process and a second finishing drying cycle is done. The lactic acid bacteria reside naturally in the malt until use. A brewer simply includes a charge of acidulated malt to their grist usually 1-5% to and the lactic acid present on the grain acts to reduce the pH. General rule of thumb is that you use around 1% of acidulated malt to reduce the pH by 0.1 unit. So if you are using 1 ton of malt, 10 kg of acidulated malt is used to reduce the pH from 5.6 to 5.5. And if you want to reduce further, based on the recipe, you need to proportionately increase the amount of addition of acidulated malt. Other than the acidulated malt, Food grade inorganic acids such as sulfuric acid, hydrochloric acid, and phosphoric acid are also used, where phosphoric acid being the most common acid. Similarly, food grade organic acids such as lactic acid, readily available in the market or from the in house fermentation, are also commonly used. The acids dissociate immediately in the mass or wort and then present only in the form of safan. Therefore, this must be made clear to the consumer that they are not drinking the acid directly. Use of food grade calcium salt are also very common to reduce the pH of the mass. The addition of approximately 300 gram calcium sulfate for 100 kg malt or 250 gram calcium chloride for 100 kg of malt is sufficient to cause reduction in pH of 0.1 unit. However, the level of calcium ions and chloride or sulfate ion in association with wort chemistry to influence the total concentration of these ions need to be assessed properly, which we shall see in the presentation of water chemistry later in this channel. To lower the pH of mass by 0.1 unit, 0.64 equivalent acid is used for 100 kg of malt. Similarly, to reduce the pH of wort by 0.1 unit, 0.32 equivalent acid is used for 100 kg of malt in the wort kettle. Equivalent weight of the acid are provided by the commercial manufacturer. For hydrochloric acid, it's 36.5. For sulfuric acid, it's 49. For lactic acid, it's 90. And for phosphoric acid, it's 32.7 gram per equivalent. 
So if you have 100% lactic acid, the amount in the mass to reduce pH by 1 unit is calculated by 0.64 times of 90 which gives 57.6 gram which on round of is this value here of 58 gram for 100 kg of malt used. Similarly, if the lactic acid is only 80%, the equivalent weight would be 90, this value here, divided by 0.8 as the purity here, which gives 112.5. So if you are using 80% lactic acid to reduce the pH of the mass by 0.1 unit, you need to multiply equivalent weight of this 80% lactic acid, which is 112.5, by 0.64, which gives 72 gram per 100 kg of malt. If your mass is of 1 ton of mole, you have to use 720 gram of 80% lactic acid. Same calculation applies for other acid and for the application in work. You may pause this video for a while to do. You may pause this video for a while to use your own calculator to understand the calculation here. In some large breweries, mass acidification is performed biologically with the propagation of lactobacillus culture in the brewery. Most commonly used lactobacillus strain are lactobacillus amyloborus and lactobacillus amyloliticus. The culture is propagated in unhopped wort, diluted to 12 degree plateau and temperature is adjusted to 45 to 48 degree centigrade for optimal activity of lactic acid bacteria. After 24 to 48 hours in the propagation tank, lactic acid bacteria produce 0.7 to 1% of lactic acid and pH drops to 3.2 to 3.3. The lactic acid bacteria cannot tolerate any more of their own metabolic product and so the equilibrium is automatically established at those concentrations of lactic acid. The required quantity of inoculum to add to acidify the mass or the wort is calculated based on the titration to identify the concentration of lactic acid in the inoculum and based on the calculation like we have seen before based on the concentration of the lactic acid. The remaining quantity of culture is then further inoculated for the next batch. This is a, a typical schematic PID for biological acidification plant where one is a propagator and two is the storage tank for the acid medium. Wort from the Lauterton going to the wort kettle is tapped in and brought to the propagation tank where it is diluted to a degree plateau and after 24 to 48 hours after the formation of lactic acid part of it is stored in a storage tank and the remaining part of it is used to continue another inoculum. The lactic acid solution in the storage tank is pumped in to the mass tun or to the wort kettle in order to adjust the pH of mass or the pH of wort. Oxidation during massing as seen before, oxygen ingress during the massing process reduces the flavor stability due to the oxidation reaction primarily of lipids and also produces darker color work in beer. Oxygen pickup occurs during falling cases. The splashing of the mass when inlet from above, use of high agitatory speed, formation of vortex during transfer by pump and pickup of air by the pump during emptying or due to the leakage of the pump system. Various design and operational conditions need to be considered to prevent the ingress of oxygen in the mass. Some of the major considerations include use of pre-masser and the inlet from the bottom of the mass tun, adjusting the agitatory speed to avoid the vortex formation, avoiding vortex formation when pumping from one vessel to another, using deaerated water as pre-layer before mass inlet, and flushing of grain handling section from grist bin to mass tun, including milling with the inert gases such as nitrogen and carbon dioxide before massing in, in order to wash out all the oxygen present in the system. Once the action of alpha amylase is complete in the predefined sacrification rest time, iodine test is the most practiced and the easiest method to confirm the completion of the starch degradation. If complete starch hydrolysis is not achieved, it leads to less fermentable extract, lower attenuation, lesser yield, undesirable beer flavor, and negative impact on haze stability due to the starch yields. Starch shows a powerful color reaction with the iodine solution. 
Emilio's tails and intense deep blue to black color because the iodine incorporates itself easily into the helical structure of Emilio's whereas Emilopectin gives less intense blue to violet color because it lacks the extensive helical regions. This we have seen in our previous presentation also. Limit extreme formed by the action of beta amyloids on amylopectin gives a brick red or brown color with iodine. During iodine test, the drop of iodine is added in few drops of mass and color is absorbed against white ceramic tile. Once the mass sacrification is complete, with the mass containing small proportion of limit dextrins, maltodriers, maltose, and simple sugar, no change in the yellow color of iodine is observed. This confirms the completion of sacrification and therefore the mass is further heated to 77 to 79 degrees centigrade in order to inhibit the further enzymatic action and then is transferred to the lautogen for word filtration. We shall cover word filtration in another presentation. Thank you all for your time and attention. Hope I was able to present and explain you with the necessary details that you are seeking for regarding the massing technology. If you have any queries, suggestion, or feedback, or if you want us to present some topics that you are interested of, or if you have any story about your passion for beer or brewing that you want to share with us, do write us an email on brewing the distilling the professionals at gmail.com. If you like this presentation and want some more videos in the future, please subscribe to this channel. This keeps on motivating us for more videos. Kindly share among your colleagues and friends so that more could learn out of it. Thank you once again. Cheers and see you again with some new topics.